Hey, what's up? The Cabinet Vision Guy here with another video podcast. In this podcast, I'm just recreating the presentation that I did at the AWFS Fair in Las Vegas, Nevada, for those of you that couldn't make it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Cabinet Vision is a very dynamic, highly customizable application. We can see this from the very start of Cabinet Vision. If I open the part catalog, we can either rename any of the parts to better suit our needs or create additional parts. We can also create and edit any number of materials that we use in our shop, as well as assign them to parts in an infinite number of arrangements in the material schedules. We also have the ability to create custom doors, profiles, and even special construction methods for cabinets, drawers, and rollouts, and even countertops. It doesn't stop there though, and I would like to show you some of the things that we can do as more advanced customization. I'll start by creating a new job. Next, I'll draw a simple wall on this job. Now that I have that, I'm going to drop a corner 45 cabinet on this wall, the one that ships with Cabinet Vision. I just need to go to Objects, Custom Cabinets, Base Cabinets, and drag and drop the 45 base corner object on the wall. If I click on this cabinet, you can see the various options that I have to choose from. These parameters determine the clearance values, how wide, tall, and deep the cabinet object is, as well as other positional information. Now, let me go ahead and place a special corner 45 base cabinet that I created on the wall. I just need to go to Objects, the CV Guy Catalog, CC Objects, and then Base Cabinets. Now I can drag and drop the CV45 cabinet that I created on the wall. So, this looks pretty much identical to the one that came with Cabinet Vision. The difference can be seen when I click on it and look at the sidebar. We can see these two new attributes, left end width and right end width. The two attributes allow me to control the end sizes of this 45 corner cabinet. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say that I needed the left end of this to meet up with cabinets that have an 18 inch depth instead of the normal 24 inch depth. If I change the left end width to 18 and let me zoom in on this left end and press enter, we can see that the shape of the cabinet has changed so that it's now 18 inches deep on this side. Let's change the right end to a vanity depth of 21 inches. Now this is cool, but rather than just showing you what we can do with this, uh, I want to go through the steps of how I did this because, you know, that's what I do. We'll start by deleting this wall and drawing a new one. Next, I want to grab a simple base cabinet and place it on the wall. Now, the typical corner base cabinet width is 36 inches wide by 34 and a half inches tall by 36 inches deep. So I will go ahead and change this cabinet to meet those dimensions. Before we start shaping the cabinet, we need to add those extra attributes that I had on the sidebar. I can either open the object tree to do this, or I can just right click on the cabinet and select properties. Then I just need to click on the parameters tab. Now these parameters are what Cabinet Vision uses to define what this cabinet is, where it is, and how to handle all of the data for it. We want to add to this list, so we can just click add to bring up the parameter edit dialog. There are a few options here that we can choose from. Let me go into a little detail about them. The type allows me to define how Cabinet Vision is going to handle this parameter. Because we know that this parameter will be a measurement, like 18 inches or 22 inches or even 500 millimeters, then we can leave this type as measurement. Next, we have the style. The style will denote where we can see the parameter at. Standard parameters can only be used or edited from the object tree or the parameters tab. So we will change this to attribute, which will cause the parameter to show up on the sidebar. Next, we want to give our parameter a name. This needs to be a name that Cabinet Vision doesn't already use, but is easy for us to remember. I like to start my parameter names with an underscore. I will go ahead and call this underscore R-E-N-D. It doesn't really matter what this is, so you can be as creative as you want. Next comes the description. This is the actual text that we will see in the sidebar, so I will set this to right end width. Finally, I can give this a default value of 24, seeing as, uh, how that's the most typical base cabinet depth value, and click OK. Scrolling to the bottom of the list will show our new attribute. I'm just going to quickly make the left end width parameter 
giving it a name of underscore LEND. Now that we have verified that the parameters are there, we can close this dialog and see that the attributes are showing up in our sidebar. But they don't do anything yet. We can see that, as I change the values, nothing happens. Let's fix that by shaping the cabinet now. We just need to right click on the cabinet and select Edit Shape, which brings up our CAD shaping tools. The first thing that I like to do is remove all the constraints that Cabinet Vision has already assigned. We can just right click and select Remove Constraints to do that. Any constraints that are checked will be removed, so we can just click OK. Now we have a blank slate to start drawing with. We can now grab the line tool and draw a new line between the center point of the face and the center point of the end. Next, we want to get rid of those extra lines here and here. We can use the Trim Delete tool to do that. With the general shape done, we want to start assigning constraints to get the shape of the cabinet to follow the logic that we want. I want these elements to always align with the x-axis, and these to always align with the y-axis. At the show, I couldn't really show this very well, but luckily, I can show this here easily. If I zoom in, we can see the small axis indicator, telling us that the x-axis runs along the wall, while the y-axis runs away from the wall. To force CAD elements to stay perpendicular with an axis, we can use a logical constraint. More specifically, the X and Y axis logical constraint. I will start with the X axis constraint tool and select the back CAD element. Now this little green square is telling me that the constraint was placed properly. Now I can activate the constraint tool again and then just select the other CAD element. Now I can do the same for the Y axis elements. With the axis constraints all set, we can now put in the logic to make the shape follow the attributes that we created earlier. We do this with the length dimension constraint. Once I have that tool activated, I can click on an element, like the right end, and now I can drag out the dimension line and click again. Now Cabinet Vision wants to know what we intend to do with this constraint. Do we want to keep it at this length at all times, or do we want to specify a different length? Since we want this to be dynamic, we need to change the text and enter the name of the right end width parameter, underscore rend. Now we can click test. Since Cabinet Vision found the underscore rend parameter, it returned the value that was set there. Now we can click OK. We can see that the length parameter is now showing in the dimension line. Let's do the same for the other end using the underscore lend parameter now. All of our shaping is done. Well, almost. We still need to make sure that all of the sides are set to the proper type. Otherwise, Cabinet Vision won't know how to handle them properly. We need to change our new side from undefined to face. This element used to be the face, but uh, we want this to be an automatic end now, so the Cabinet Vision can define it as finished or unfinished as necessary. And finally, this needs to change from an end to an automatic back. Perfect. Now we just check the shape, and since it turned green, we know we're good to go. When we click the return button, Cabinet Vision lets us know that we will lose any sectioning information, which is fine, uh, we want the shape, not the sections, so we'll click OK again. Almost done now. We just have to change the cabinet type. Remember we used a standard base cabinet, and that's what Cabinet Vision thinks it is, and we need to fix that. We just go to the section editor, then go to the properties tab, and click on the general properties. We can now change this from a type of standard to a type of 45 corner. And there you have it. All that's left to do is save this back into our library as a new cabinet, which I won't do since I've already have one there. Just to prove it works though, I'll change the left end width real quick. See? Excellent. So, I thought that would be fun to do, but there's one more thing that I want to cover before we finish this video up, and that would be mixed construction styles. Now, I did all of my work with 32mm cabinets, but for any household that needed a built-in oven, I needed to have a face frame or panel behind the oven to kind of hold it in place and make it look good. To that end, I created this cabinet. You can see that it has a 32mm construction style and a face frame as well. 
I even added some attributes to control the style and rail widths. If we go to the section editor, we can see that as I move my sections around, my face frame resizes accordingly as well. Let's see how I did that. We'll start with the empty base object, object. Now there's nothing in here. Think of this as a null object that we can use to define whatever parts and logic we want. Since my construction method is currently 32 millimeter, we need to change it to a face frame construction method. Now that we have that, we can add our face frame back in place. We just need to go to modifications and select hide parts. All the parts that are checked will be hidden. We just need to uncheck frame parts and click OK. Now we have the frame, but the toe base needs to be removed as to make it easier for us to place later on on our tall cabinet. So we just go to properties and click toe. Here we just zero out all of these properties. And voila. We have a full size face frame that we can attach where we need it. So now we would save this into our library where we can use it again inside of our tall cabinet. I've already done this, so I will skip that step. And next we need to pull out a tall cabinet. The one that ships with cabinet vision will be fine. The first thing we want to do is erase all of the sectioning information. So we just click on the delete button and say yes. Now I want to split this cabinet up into three sections. One for the top doors, one for the face frame, and one for the drawer. So I can just select the main opening and press the horizontal multi-split button. We want three openings, so I will change this to opens and click OK. Now that we have the sectioning information that I want, we can start assigning what everything should be. The top section should be a pair of doors. The bottom section should be a drawer. I want my drawer to be 8 inches tall. It doesn't matter what it needs to be when we produce it, but I want it to, at this height for now. We'll set the top section at 24 inches for now. Before we add our face frame, I want to put the interior fixed shelves in place so that the objects won't fall through the top and into the drawer. Now we can move to the face ortho viewport. Here, we can place our face frame from our catalog. Now it's not the right size or in the right location. We will fix that using object intelligence. So with the face frame selected, we will change the X position to zero because we want the face frame to line up with the leftmost part of the cabinet. Next, we want to change the Y position. This will require an equation, so I can click on the ellipsis button to bring up the parameter edit dialog. Now I already know what needs to be done here, and the equation I will use is colon cab dot face dot fo at three dot p a b s y. What does this mean? We'll start with the colon. This denotes that the face frame should move up a level in the object tree to look at our parent cabinet. Then I want to give the full path for the third face opening object in the tree, which is cab dot face dot fo at three. Finally. I want the face opening's Y location. But why didn't I just specify Y? Well, that's because the face opening has a Y value that is relative to its parent, the face, which has a Y that is relative to the cabinet. We want the absolute Y value, meaning the Y value of the face opening relative to the cabinet's 0, 0, 0 location. That's why I use PABSY, or part absolute Y. Once I enter this equation in, and I can now just click OK and see the face frame snap to right above the drawer front, right where we need it to be. Now, the in out or Z is just fine where it is, so we'll leave that alone. We do, however, need to change the height of the frame so that it matches the height of that face opening. We'll use the same opening, colon cab dot face dot fo at three, but this time the last parameter will be dy to represent the height of the opening. Now we can just click OK, and now you can see that the frame has the proper height. Finally, we just need to specify the width, or dx, of the frame. This will be a simpler equation, colon cab.dx. When we click OK now, we get the final result. If I render it out, we can see the face frame where it needs to be. Now this cabinet definitely needs a little more engineering done to it to get everything right for production, but this is a great start. So we can now see some of the potential for the customizability of cabinet vision. And that was the presentation.
For those of you that had already seen it in Vegas, sorry that there's nothing new for you. But for those that didn't get to go, or see the presentation, I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, thanks to Hayfula for their continued support, and finally, here's today's quote. 